Hi guys, welcome back to another video. This video is another part of our series about craft projects based on Toronto's history. Our first video in the series was an art project based on the group of seven. So if you haven't seen that one, make sure to check it out. Now, in our newsletter article this week, we gave some information about Mary Ann Shad and her newspaper, The Provincial Freeman. We talked about why it was such an important newspaper and super important in Toronto's history. But today, I'm gonna to be showing you a craft where you can make a print similar to the way that a printing press works. Now, a modern printing press, which is a machine that can print pictures and text onto paper, looks something like this. They're huge machines that can fill up entire rooms, and sometimes they're three stories tall. These presses use complicated technology to print. Often they use lots of different chemicals, and they can print huge amounts of paper really, really fast. But Mary Ann Chad's paper was written in the 1850s, and they definitely did not have printing presses like that back then. The printing press that Mary Ann Chad's paper was most likely printed on probably looks something like this. As you can tell, it's a lot smaller and it looks a lot simpler. To run a press like this, an operator would have taken type which were basically little metal stamps that represented different letters, and they would line them up in the order of the words they wanted to print. Someone would have to actually set this by hand, and so printing took a really long time. But once you'd set it once, you could print the same paper over and over and over again, which is why if you were printing something that needed a lot of copies, like a newspaper, this was way faster than writing it all out by hand. So after you'd laid out all of your type, you would roll a little bit of ink over it and then place a paper flat down on it. Then use a roller to squeeze the paper down onto the type. So today I'm gonna to show you a craft where you can make your own print. To do this, we are going to use a couple of different supplies. The first thing that you're going to need is styrofoam like this. So this is a styrofoam tray and it's the best kind to use for this project. This is usually what meat is sold in at the grocery store. So anytime your family buys food that comes in a tray like this, just ask your family to keep it for you, wash it out, make sure it's really clean, and then you can use it for a project like this. The other supplies you're gonna need are some paint, a paintbrush or a spoon to spread the paint on. You're going to need a piece of cardboard or a butter knife, and you're gonna need a dull pencil. So a pencil that hasn't been sharpened. Okay, the first step is to cut off any parts of the styrofoam that have writing on them. So I'm gonna make a line right here and cut this out. Next, with your dull pencil, you're gonna carefully draw whatever design you want onto the styrofoam. As you can see from where I'm doing it in a second, I'm not pressing all the way through the styrofoam. I just wanna make a little bit of a groove in it. This way, the paint can stay in there. Now remember, anything you draw, just like on a printing press, is gonna come up backwards. So I would recommend that unless you are really up for a challenge, don't write any words on this. Just stick to pictures. Next, using a spoon or paintbrush, you're gonna paint a pretty thick layer of paint over your styrofoam. You wanna make sure that all of the little grooves where you've put your pencil markings are filled with paint. Next, using either some cardboard or a butter knife, you're going to very carefully scrape along the styrofoam to take off all of the paint. So you want only paint left in the grooves. Once you finish that, the next step is to take a blank piece of paper and you're going to carefully turn your styrofoam over and push it down against the paper. Try not to move it back and forth like this or it's all gonna get smudged. Just carefully press it down and then lift it straight up. 
And on your paper, as you can see from mine in a second, you should see your picture from wherever you had pencil marks in the paint. Now, just like a printing press, once you've made this stamp, you can make more and more and more copies of it pretty easily and really quickly. So have some fun and make some more copies of the same thing. You can use other colors of paint as well to make different versions. I hope you've enjoyed this craft, and if you would like to know more about Mary Ann Shad and the Provincial Freeman, make sure to read our newsletter article, because we're going to talk about the history of this really cool paper and how it made its way to Toronto. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did this art project, we'd really love to see it, so you can send it in. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye!